All right, Phil Guy wants KOM attempt. A lot of people, or some people, um, are wondering how he is so fast and how he has managed to um, go so fast up Norton Summer. And some questionable people were saying that he's doping, but anyway, we'll see. Um, so he did 455 watts for 11 minutes, which I think is around 6.7 watts per kilo um, for 11 minutes, which is uh, a very solid effort. Um, and basically, people are saying, like, how's he doing this? Is he faster now? So we're just going to go through what Phil Guy power data and other people's power data and to see if it is actually as extraordinary as it first seems uh, because his time is in the top 10 of all times and if you've ever done Norton Summit you know that the climb is incredibly well drafted as in if you're drafted you can gain like a minute easily um, so if, if Phil Gunn was on the back of a motorbike he would have done 10, 10 minutes 30 maybe even 10 minutes um, so anyway he's just saying here that he has the anti doper versus doper element but it's, it's not really that much he likes Tommy Danielson so he's not going to go after his um, so here we get some power data. So 68 kilos, he says he is. I've heard rumors he's 66, but I, I think he probably is about 68 kilos. Um, for how tall he is, like he is lean, but 66 is too little in my opinion. He can do 480 watts for 10 minutes, um, and he can do 400 watts for an hour. So again, you can see that this Norton Summit effort is 30 watts off his best ever 10 minute power. So you can again, you can see it's, it's not, there were remarks that he was not that tired at the top. Well, if it's 30 watts less than what you can do for 10 minutes, then obviously not, you're not going to be as tired. Um, he says his power data looks like he can, should win the tour, um, but basically what he's saying is that he's very specialised now um, in a world tour uphill time trial. He'd probably do all right, um, but obviously in racing he wouldn't. And maybe after, I think the other thing I've heard with Phil Gaiman is that he's really good fresh, but after like you know a week or even just like a, a day of racing, he, he's nowhere near as good as he was. Um, so yeah, he can do seven point one watts per kilo for ten minutes, which is pretty similar to what. Pino has done 6.9 watts per kilo um, for 10 minutes. Um, he posts that power data chart um, on his after he won after he came second in uh, the Tour de France um, in 2014. 6.9 watts per kilo. That shit. No one po publishes because it's so high. Um, it's off the charts, and normally only dopers do that. I I think that it, this thing is a bit odd. Like I'm not really sure why it mentions that. Um, but anyway. Uh, so we just keep going down this article. It's pretty interesting, and then it just goes on about his bike, but no one really cares because you're not in the UK, then your bike's still pretty heavy. Um, so we're gonna go tour of California in 2016, and we're gonna show what it is to climb and what it's now a world tour race. So for the first six minutes, he rode at 7.4 watts per kilo, which is absolutely outrageous. And for most people, that would be five minutes full gas. I mean, to ride at six minutes at 7.4 watts per kilo is quite frankly unbelievable. Um, that, that is incredibly strong power, and then he does the next 10 minutes at 6.5 watts per kilo. Um, so altogether, he rode six, sort of 17 minutes at, you know, 7 watts per kilo or so. But obviously, the first bit is a massive surge, so that's way more taxing for your body. And then he just rode 10.5 watts per kilo for the last 25 minutes. Um, so yeah, he did 450 watts for 16 and a half minutes, which is 6.8 watts per kilo in the middle of a race. So is he faster now than he was? No. This is empirical evidence that he's not as fast because he only did 450 watts for 11 minutes up Norton Summit. He did did 450 watts in a race for 16 and a half minutes. And look at the power curve, as you can see here. And so the power data is incredibly um, stochastic, not smooth at all. So if he was holding just fresh, even so he'd done the race and then like the race stopped at the bottom mountain and then he did a max 16 and a half effort, he would be able to get more watts up. So um, yeah, he was saying this. And he's basically just going really hard and all the rest of it. So, um, I mean, that is, for me, is an unbelievable power data. Um, and it does show the level the World Tour guys are at. Um, so, yeah. So, does this put the Norton Summit um, KOM attempt into perspective? Yeah, it does. Because you can see that he's not that fresh. I mean, I mean, he's, he's completely fresh. Okay, fine. He did fly from uh, America. You know, he didn't necessarily, wasn't adapt to the temperature, etc., etc., but still, that's that's thirty watts. Um, well, about the same power, five minutes less at the end of a race compared to what he used to be. So for sure, Phil Gaiman's not as fast. But that makes sense because it, it's not his full time job anymore. Um, he still obviously trains a lot and he trains very specifically. Um, but yeah, like it's it's not as crazy as it has been before. Um, which I think for me makes it seem it's still obviously very impressive, but it seems far less suspicious because he's done that power before. Um, and it's not that he's suddenly gone way faster. If anything, he's actually slowed down. It's just he's got his efforts more specifically. Um, so for this 6.8 watt per kilo effort, I'm now going to go on to some other people's power data. So we can see Ed Laverick, Dan Evans, they're both incredibly strong UK hill climbers. Um, and you'll see on this thing, we also, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you'll also see that we have some other, um, Tom Pidcock, you'll see on this climb, Kwiatkowski, um, Anyway, the sort of power that Laverick does for that power, um, that 
same duration um, is sort of 400 watts, but obviously it's way lighter, again, 6.8 watts per kilo. So for me, that doesn't seem as, um, that seems, in my opinion, more what the max I've seen for amateurs, um, or not, I mean, it's a bit rude saying Ed Lauer is an amateur, but for like non-world tour guys, it tends to be about the 6.8 watt per kilo limit because that's the same if we look at Dan Evans, he does 430 watts. Again, he is lighter, about 64 kilos in the hill climb season. Um, but you'll see again, that's about 6.7, 6.8 watts per kilo. So you can see that this is, you know, a similar a similar value. Um, we now go over to Haytor and again, you can see um, Ed Laverick, 12, 1216 up here. Um, and again, you'll see that his watts per kilo, again, about 400 watts, so 6.7 watts per kilo. Um, and then if you look down some other pe the, the other people on this climb, you'll see that Tom Nankara, he won the University Hill Climb Challenge. Um, Paul Doble, who now rides for um, Cole Pack, I believe, um, are all, you know, pretty close within 10, 10 seconds or so. So again, it's not, it's not as crazy as it first seems. Unfortunately, none of these guys have power data. Um, but yeah, and then Marcin Biablocki, he's... An incredibly strong time trialist. Um, he's won so many time trials. He's also ridden the Giro d'Italia um, for CCC. And again, he did 480 watts for 13 minutes, but it does weigh a fair amount more. Um, but yeah, so what what is my r conclusion at the ramblings of this? Is it as suspicious as people first say? For sure, no. Um, it's not as this crazy, oh, he's suddenly done 6.8 watts per kilo for 11 minutes. Um, you know, it's off the chart. I mean, it's not realistically because you can see other people who concentrate just on hill climbs like Ed Laverick, Dan Evans, you'll even see Tom Pickcock, I mean he's a minute down but that was in the Junior Tour of Wales, um, Sam Lee is again he's an amateur as well so like it's um, you know you can see that other people are doing the similar power data to him, um, you can see that from this thing here that he's done more watts, he's done far more power when he was a pro um, at the end of a race as well and I, I, I can't really stress this enough at the end of a race Doing these sort of efforts is just completely different to doing it fresh. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's um, it's not as crazy as everyone's seeing um, or saying it is. Um, and then you can also see from before he's done 450 watts for 17 minutes. Potentially he was on that wacky rubbish power watt beam thing. I'm not sure if he was. Oh, no, that was last year. No, nah, no, nah, he was on a good power meter this year. Basically, last year he just decided to use some power meter that's useless that no one uses, but they basically obviously said, like, we'll give you some money. Um, but anyway, you can see he beats Eddie Dunbar up here and Nilsson Powers. Both these guys are now World Tour riders um, and averages 24 Ks an hour per 6% gradient um, at 450 watts. And this was two years ago. So you can see in in two years, he's, he's regressed. I mean, which is fair enough. Um, but, you know, the power data, as we can see here, Phil on 455 for 11, and there he does 450 for 18. So, yeah. Um, and people are commenting about other people's power data. I mean, other people's power data is slightly... People are like, oh, Lars Boone's power is the only one more. It's like, yeah, but these guys are drafting. Like, that's, that's a completely different story. Um, that's, that's another thing I've been hearing. Um, I think there's a lot of un un uneducated people who are talking about Phil Gowan's data who don't necessarily understand that the level that World Tour pros are at. Um, James Knox, who turned professional two years ago now, um, he banged out six and a half watts per kilo for 25 minutes, I think it was. Um, and now... Only this year, so after a whole year of World Tour racing, he's only started to get some results this year. So the guys at the top are just ridiculous. Valverde, I mean, I've already shown. He does 6.7 watts per kilo. No, sorry. Six, yeah, he did 6.7 watts per kilo for 10 minutes at the end of the World Championships. I'll link the video below. It is unbelievable, that man. Like, so when when people are saying that his power data is just off the charts, it's just not as off the charts as everyone thinks. It's very much within the capability of a World Tour rider who's now turned into a Strava hunter. It's also, as we've seen by Ed Lavero, um, Dan Evans, it's within the realms of someone who concentrates just on hill climbs. Um, so yeah. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. If you've got any comments, then leave them below uh, and I'll see you in the next one.